Greetings gamers, I'm Lewis Crane. Welcome to part 24, the finale of our playthrough of Melgar Solid 5, Sun The Phantom Pain. something to look forward to every month. Miller was so funny at this one. <laughs> Where is the party this month? Last month was... Oh, I cannot remember. It was... Um... And then I... No, that is not right. But I am an angel of peace. I... I am a student. Oh, I am so tired. I will just lie here a while. So, uh, let's see. There's... Six foes on the wall. That's the seventh. Apparently... There's ten of these. Since I knew that this would be the last episode, I, I looked up a few things to facilitate making sure that everything that I want to be in this playthrough actually shows up. Please select a landing zone. For Roger. Land. This is Bequad, arriving shortly at LZ. Have arrived at LZ. We'll stand by. Anyway, uh, once again, this playthrough has been sponsored by Cookies 19, who got me my copy of uh, Milker Sod 5, the definitive experience, which included uh, all the DLCs and uh, the prologue standalone game Ground Zeroes, which once again I recommend you actually play that uh, before playing the main part of Pain. Though ironically, Ground Zeroes, because he just throw you in without that much explanation, Ground Zeroes is actually more difficult than the first uh, three or four chapters of Phantom Pain. So, I mean, I guess theoretically you could start Phantom Pain and once you get a proper tutorial by playing that, you could go back and play Ground Zeroes. Just remember to um, upload the save data from Ground Zeroes and then re-download it into Phantom Pain. Uh, it's okay, you can carry over Ground Zeroes data after you've already started Phantom Pain, as I found out um, pretty early on in the playthrough. And if you're wondering, yes, Quiet is back. Uh, so, I mean, I'll discuss this again Please at the end of this mission. episode. Um, in my general review of this game. But uh, what I did was I had to play this, I forget, I played it six or maybe seven times in a row, and the name changed from Replay to Reunion. That's something I also looked up because I was like, there's no way we can lose quite forever. I, I'm too lazy to do all my own sniping. And uh, we got quite back. Um, I had considered uh, playing like the last time like the one the time you actually get her back uh, on camera except I found out that like nothing changes like all the cutscenes are exactly the same as the first time you face her um, there's not even like a small like mini like voice clip afterwards of like saying like welcome back or or something um, I, I'm gonna get into that at the end of this playthrough uh, end of this episode well I mean it's both the end of this episode and the end of the playthrough all together uh, anyway, what was I doing? So, I think... Do I have all the... Mo nope, I still have one more to go. So let's Please do this quickly. We have to leave Mother Base and do something and, and come back before Paz will see us again anyway, so... Heading to Afghanistan. Nope. Gotta conserve materials. Uh, as we found out last time, I, I'm running. I ran out of African peaches, and I couldn't actually equip my sleep grenades anymore. Deploying. 
It's one of the reasons why, we're, why we're, I'm doing this side up on camera isn't just to uh, force time to pass so that Paz will actually talk to us again. Um, another thing I found as I was trying to figure out like how many of these photos do I need to collect to finish the Paz storyline. And by the way, I haven't spoiled that much. I, I don't... I don't quite know what's gonna happen when I finish this, but I mean, being how tragic Paz's story's been like throughout this game, I, I assume I'm gonna shed a tear or two when we get to it. Um, but I found out there's a super easy and super hilarious way to chase down these uh, wandering mother base soldiers. I mean, it just takes so many tranquilizer or stun. Um, Tranquilizer rounds or stun grenades, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Enemy prison detected. The has been updated. Be careful down there, boss. Oh wow, he's really close. So the strategy is, even though these guys are kind of insane, they do vaguely have some memories. So you play this song, which was actually kind of plot important in Peace Walker. in a cardboard box. Boss? Is that you? Nine years. Nine years I've been... One of the guys out on a mission at the time. He's fallen a long way from the glory days. But uh, will he come back to us? Bring him home, boss. <gasps> Completed. Please go extract him. Roger. Arrived at Mother Base. So yeah, even though those wandering soldiers have gone kind of nutty, they uh, they remember important stuff like that song and also the fact that Big Boss loves cardboard boxes. So basically, anyone walking around in a cardboard box would be regarded as Big Boss by these not entirely their uh, mother base soldiers. So yeah, I, I thought that was funny enough. I mean, I I had a good chuckle the first time I saw it work. This is B-Quad, arriving shortly at LZ. So for some... This is B-Quad, on station at LZ. If by some chance you uh, play this game yourself, after watching this playthrough, remember the cardboard box trick. He captured it alive. Wow, Rocco's Modern Life? You know, those old uh, Nicktoons, like Rocco's Modern Life or um, Ren and Simpy, they had a lot of messed up jokes that, like, seeing them now, these, these shows could not have actually been intended primarily for children. I think they were actually aimed at, like, not necessarily irresponsible parents, but maybe like sub subversive uh, uncles or aunts or something, or grandparents maybe. Please select a mission. Please select a mission. Are we doing? Oh right. Please I have to, like, select a mission. Go back to Mother Base a few times for this to actually work. 
Heading to Mother Base. I guess while we're approaching and landing, I will talk a little bit about uh, why I didn't bother doing the fight reunion on camera. Um, with all the cutscenes being the same. Uh, so, uh, Hideo um, Kojima is a director and I think the producer? At, at least, at the very least, the director. And You know, I don't remember if he was also the producer and or head writer for most of these, but I mean, I, I assume he had at least a little bit to do with them, especially earlier on in the series. Um, he and Konami parted ways before this game was actually finished, and so I kind of feel like Chapter 2, which is like Chapter, uh, you no, know, which is like Mission like 30 or 33 onward um, it feels really rushed kind of like if you've ever played Xenogears a PlayStation 1 RPG which you can also like get the PSN version on like PlayStation 3 and 4 um, disc 2 is like super rushed because they ran out of time and budget and I feel like the same thing happened to the second part of Metal Gear The Costa Rican Sea. It is so beautiful. Costa Rica means rich coast. Please, please, get them out of my country. Them? Huh? Who was I thinking of? It was. Um, and then I... No, that is not right. But I am an angel of peace. I... I am a student. Ah, oh, I am so tired. I will just lie here a while. Did anyone else notice that that photo, like, dematerialized? It didn't actually land on the floor, it just kind of faded out before it could hit, or like as it was hitting the floor. Well, I don't get all the details right. Ooh, new cassette tape. I finally had a decent draft of the lyrics, so I showed them to Professor Galvez first. He liked them. Roger. And if you want to hear the rest of that cassette tape, play the game. Or, I'm sure someone on YouTube uploaded all the cassette tapes. Alright, so let's look at that mission list. Please Even though I think mission. there's two more pause scenes, but we'll, we'll, we'll put them in later. So as you can see, Total Self Repeat, Extreme Repeat, Subsistence Repeat. That one was tricky, by the way. Um, Having to do that without like any mines, decoys, or rockets, that that was something. Uh, I died more than once on that. D though not as many times as I died doing <laughs> a quiet exit. That was really brutal. Um, 
So this is only non-repeat. What's really shameful is even the final mission appears to just be a repeat of the Tan Sahelanthropus uh, mission. Which, I mean, I guess makes sense. I mean, we saw Eli, who we now know as Liquid Snake, um, escape um, maybe one or two episodes ago uh, in like an interstitial cutscene that I can't cause, can't trigger again. Um, if this is like quite a reunion or like any of these other repeats, then it's just going to have identical cutscenes. It's not going to have anything new, which is going to make no sense because this time Eli has escaped with. Um, all of those uh, African child soldiers, so uh, again, this has to do with the fact that Kojima and Konami parted ways before this game was finished, which means that there are definitely parts of this game that are kind of incomplete or, or rushed, kind of like Xenogears Disc 2. Okay, it's one of these, so I'll be terrified. Don't you die on me, damn it! He be dropping! Intubate, now! Cardiac arrest, he's in B-Fib! Clear! No response, hit him again! You guys catch in the credits what's going on? How's he doing? Well, he stabilized, but it took too long. He's in a coma. What about him? He uh, took some shrapnel to the head. So two clues. They listed Big Boss's name and Venom Snake's name separately. And they showed Big Boss on the floor, you know, with his eye patch, but he didn't have that horn-like shrapnel sticking out. So there is some kind of crazy plot twist going on here. To be fair, they've been dropping clues throughout the course of the game, but it's only by listening to some of the cassette tapes off camera. That I start to really put it together. Oh, those of you who are like music fans, I've just been playing of good 1980s music in this game. But uh, this was, I think, originally a David Bowie song, though this is like the 1982 cover by. Um, you know, I'm probably gonna mispronounce it. It's Midge, and then it's U R E. I don't know if that's pronounced Ur or Uri? Uri? I don't know. There was also like a live cover by Kurt Cobain on like MTV when MTV was still like actual music television. Um, but yeah, among, among the three versions, I think I actually like this one the best. Not simply because it's featuring Metal Gear, but this definitely has like that 1980s vibe that I like. Is this gonna... is this like the entire song? I mean, the perspective is a little different than when we, we did Chapter Zero. Okay, pay attention. You notice me. What? Seriously, you haven't noticed yet? Alright, are you gonna notice me? 
Hello? Seriously? Tu vas que ça Imagine that parts of this will be the same as the prologue mission. V has come to. V has come to. Oh, fun trivia. The voice of the lady on the iDroid is Donna Burke, who's also the singer of Sins of Father. Who is me? The ending theme to this game. Well, not to this game, but to the episode. Who is me? The episode of Skullface. Can you hear me? Are you having difficulty speaking? Can you move your head? Just nod if you can hear me. Look up, please. Whoa, what is wrong with that fan? Very good. Oh wait, maybe that's not a fan. Maybe it's just a structural Please support? Please try to relax. What is there that? is plenty of time. I need to tell you something. Please listen and try not to panic. You've been in a coma for quite some time. Yes, yes, I know. You would like to know how long. I'm afraid it's been nine years. Come down. Come down. Try not to panic. Try not to panic. Now. You'll be all right. Is it really safe to sedate someone who's just come out of a coma? With their How nerve. How do you feel? It's been one week since you came too. Now let's try getting you out of that bed. Nurse. Don't worry, you've lost some strength, but we've been maintaining your muscle mass through massages, CPM therapy, and EMS. Now, I need to explain something to you, but you mustn't be alive. Nine years ago, you were injured in an explosion. Upon examination, we discovered 108 foreign bodies embedded within you. In addition to shrapnel, we also found fragments of human anyway, bone. Don't mind me if I talk teeth. over the doctor here. This is so far this Most part is the same removed, as a prologue chapter. But I just some want to point out fragments that um, still remain. That news broadcast. They are located. If you pay attention, like a plane on fire and crashing. Your heart. Uh, that's like clearly the third, the third child, or um, I can never remember the name, Tretti Rebnik or something. Look at Psychomantis. This. The fragments are lodged deep within your cerebral cortex. So it wasn't just like random background chatter. It was we actually give you an like a plot point that the was easy to overlook the first time. But 
Even if we were to extract, you would most likely suffer a brain hemorrhage. Mental and physical impairment are unavoidable. However, your current status is not life-threatening. This X-ray is of your upper body. You better look now. Best to understand your situation sooner than later. I know it's difficult, but please look down. It's best to see with your own eyes. Be brave. in your coma I mean you'd have changes to your neurochemistry and maybe even your neuroelectric field couldn't sedation accidentally put you back into a coma it's true there are those who wish you would never woken up you should be dead, but you're not. The wheels are in motion. Your enemies are everywhere. We must alter your appearance immediately. Otherwise, I fear you won't leave this place alive. It's a wide open world out there, so there's something we need to take care of first. This is you, as you've lived until this day. I'm going to change your appearance. We have no other choice. So if you're wondering, that was the online avatar um, portrait we created for ourselves at the beginning. So if we put two and two together, Venom Snake is very good. Applied to be you, the player. Now, let's remove these bandages. Hmm, your face has healed nicely. To tell you the truth, these bandages were more for your protection, to hide you from those who want you dead. As of today, your name is Ahab. Forget everything. Your name, your past. So you, the player, in my case, Liz, in my case, Liz Crane, you were the medic who took one of the bombs out of Paz, and now you've been made into a body double. Everything feels all right. Ah! <laughs> 
with what was probably isopropyl alcohol. Did we have this intense of a close-up on Quiet's face the first time in the prologue chapter? I don't think so. Alright, so they have altered some elements to make this different. Time to go. What, what, what happened to the woman? The woman? I. We gave her a light. She took the short way down. Who are you? Who am I? You're talking to yourself. Been watching over you for nine years. You can call me Ismail. What the hell is going on? Well, the good news is, here in the land of the living. Bad news? A war wants you to <laughs> On your feet, soldier. The whole place is coming down. Need a little pick-me-up? Okay. Here. No. Nothing like a little digoxin to get you back in the game. Come on! So, in this version of, of events, Ishmael, who we now know to be the real big boss, says a lot more, like you're talking to yourself. Also, what with my nickname being Ahab. We're getting out of here. Move it. And the Huckford Call being called Pequod. There, there are a lot of Moby Dick references. is still agonizingly slow. Let's see, so far in this version of the chapter, the doctor told us more and showed us more. There was more of a close up and quiet. And Ishmael slash Big Boss told us more. sure because it's been so long but I think even some of the musical cues in this version of the chapter are different as well
So if you're not entirely sure, you may want to go back and rewatch at least part of uh Whoops. You can do this. Um you may to go back and rewatch part three of this playthrough, because part one and two were dedicated to ground zeros. Uh, part three has a prologue chapter in it for uh Fanta Pain. But it seems like a lot of details in this version have been like tweaked or expanded. The smoke grenade they put to co cover their own advance this way, hurry. allows us to hide.
get caught in those searchlights. Uh oh. Don't you die on me, Ahab. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Time to walk. Press the stance button to stand up. Don't get caught in those searchlights. Here they come. Hurry. Grigola, come on. What's happening out there? It's all right, we'll be okay. I can't see what's happening.
Down on your stomach and crawl. If you move, we're done for. Play dead. Don't move. Except I can't really stop my breathing animation. We're not very convincing corpses at all. Why does that guy have a rocket launcher prepped? There's no reason to have a rocket launcher prepped for this kind of situation. to the light, eh? To be fair, the soldier pulling the rocket launcher could not possibly have anticipated this need for a rocket launcher.
Hold on. We better stop and treat that injury. I'm actually doing a little bit worse. Oh, hey! This wasn't an option the first time I played this. Picking up the SMG instead of... Oh, but it's not silence. That would be bad. Yeah, I don't recall having the choice of picking up the SMG in the original version of this chapter. Or mission. Episode, whatever. So confusing. There's two chapters to this game, unless we count Ground Zeroes as Chapter Zero. So like two and a half chapters to this game. And each of the main missions are concerned episodes. But each episode of this playthrough is considered a part. Run interference.
I'm guessing I'm gonna have to replay this off camera to uh, get some challenge tasks, probably to not be spotted or not use uh, reflex mode, just like in the original version of this prologue. Or maybe to not take any hits. Is Psychomantis? Doesn't it seem like Psychomantis is stronger as a child than as an adult? I'm oh, sorry, did I just kill all these guys? It's nice to give me enough time to read that.
honest, I'm not sure that being run over by a tank would actually inflict greater damage than taking a point blank, a point blank cannon blast. I feel like that's like an action movie conceit to think that any kind of vehicle crashing into you or running over you would actually do more damage than a cannon blast. I mean, it looks cool, but... Wait, this is different. I don't remember having to shoot this guy before. Or... Did I have to shoot him and I just, I've just forgotten about it? Get in! Oh yeah, that's right. This is a British ambulance. Because it's a British base in uh, Cyprus, right? That's why the driver's wheel is on the right side. Day for first responders. seen Inception? That part reminds me of when uh, the van in Inception is going over and everyone's swaying back and forth like they're having a party. Wait. Is that it? What about the part where you ride on horseback? Does that, does that not happen in this? Okay, there's gonna be some kind of cutscene that makes this different from the first time we did this. This way, boss. Hurry. Okay. Well, that's different. So the real big boss got first, the boss slot. Use that bike. It's tuned up and ready to go. I'll handle the rest. Here. That's your name as of today best change your face to this one he'll take your place from here on he's snake he believes it too 
My very own phantom, huh? <laughs> Boss, the whole world wants your head. Don't worry. He can handle it. Move now. Quickly. Aren't you forgetting something? Again. Right. If you're wondering, that motorcycle says triumph, not trump. Ugh. I mean, from a distance, it's hard to read a lettering, I know. I'm trying to remember if that's actually the same motorcycle from Melgar Saw 3 or 4. So the real big boss took my identity because, or, so you the player are the medic. Oh, okay, here we go. Here's a timeline. Oh, uh, I guess so. Should I read this? This is moving too quickly, but 1965, the Congo crisis is brought to a close. 1967, China conducts its first hydrogen bomb test. 1968, even disappears. Last seen in Hanoi. 1969, the U.S. Department of Defense successfully sends its first message using ARPANET. Trion non proliferation nuclear weapons in Pitanchus Forest. Major zero to the state bans Fox. The Democratic Republic of Congo chooses the name to Zaire. The Lenin infant, Sarah Blue, Glenn's big boss, the Kotaka discovers a strain of arcade that metabolizes uranium. India conducts the atomic bomb test. Peace Walker incident. The U.S. is of ingredients in general favor of assault rock salt. The mother base is destroyed. Zero hides. I can't keep up. The sea is an Apollo of space. Crap, Doc and Orbit, Delay and Fond Terribly Bay, Project Abandoned, Eli Tank to Great Britain, Zero suffers brain damage to Skull Face Parasite, Underground Nuclear Test Site, Kahari Desert, Oh, Iranian Revolution leads to Iranian Hostage Crisis, Eli escapes his town as an African disappears, Prisons of Moza, uh, Iran Iraq War breaks out, fearing the ripple effect of Iranian Revolution, Western East and Soviet Union. Okay, you know what? Just, just pause the video if you want to read each of these. Do you remember who you are, what you were meant to do? I cheated death thanks to you. And thanks to you, I've left my mark. You have too. You've written your own history. 
You're your own man. I'm Big Boss. And you are too. No. He's the two of us together. Where we are today, we built it. This story, this legend, it's ours. We can change the world and with it the future. I am you and you are me. Carry that with you wherever you go. Thank you, my friend. From here on out, you're a big boss. So the medic, aka our best man, aka you, the player character, or really the player. Operation Intrude and oh, the events of Metal Gear Solid, no not Metal Gear Solid, just Metal Gear 1 on the Nintendo. Yeah, there being two big bosses, one being Naked Snake and the other Venom Snake explains how Saw Snake killed Big Boss in Metal Gear 1, and yet there's still Big Boss in the later games in the series. I'm gonna press X. Oh, no. Do I wanna press start? Okay. That's not an option either. Apparently this part is unskippable. Um, this isn't the end of our playthrough, because uh, I still need to do two scenes of pause, and um, I, mean, I guess mission or episode 50, even though it's just a repeat. Um, so there were some differences in this version of the prologue chapter. Um, more of a close-up and quiet. Um, the original real big boss, Naked Snake, um, or Ishmael, he says a few more things. And then instead of the chase scene boss battle where you're riding the horse and also and shooting a shotgun at the man on fire, uh, we see, you know, Naked Snake slash the real big boss riding off on the motorcycle. Um, but even so, there were large parts of this that didn't feel that different from the prologue, um, which we did back in part 30's playthrough. And again, I mean, I, I think Konami finished this up without um, Kojima's involvement. So then I have to wonder, why see another different ending sequence when I actually do the final mission, um, even though it's just an extreme repeat. I guess there's only one way to find out. Seriously though, pressing start to do nothing, pressing, not pressing any of these, or pressing escape to do something? Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I'm afraid that, like, there's going to be, like, a Marvel style stinger at the end of this, so I'll miss if I skip through. So let's just listen to Mitch Er or Yuri or whatever you pronounce U R E. Um, sing the song again. Um, so let's see. I guess. I'm 
mean, I, I'm gonna have to repeat myself at the end of the episode because no one's. People are skipping around, they're not gonna catch it in the middle of this, but, uh. To review, um. I have really been enjoying this game a lot, and I guess it's kind of shocking I put it off for so many years. Uh. Is it as good as. Melker Solid 3? I'm gonna say, as it is, probably not quite. Um, I feel like this game actually, especially with a crazy plot twist, I feel like this game had the potential to be greater than Melgar Saw 3 was. But, like, really, the second. Well, I, I won't even call it the second half of the game, because really, it's already, like, starting from, like, Mission 33 or something, so that. So only one third of the missions left in the game, but then like two thirds of those are just repeats. So really, once you reach chapter two, there's only five or six. I think six. A after you reach chapter two, there's only a real s six original like additional story missions, and even those feel kind of rushed and hodgepodge. Um, I mean, it's not. I know a lot of um, Kojima fanboys out there, um, like they're like, "Oh, Konami is so stupid to to uh, cut Kojima before this game was done." Um, but I mean, I kind of like understand like situations like this are never like all one side's fault. Um, like having read like most like the Kotaku and like Polygon articles on the situation. I feel like it's like maybe like 75% Konami's fault and 25% Kojima's fault because he, you know, like most creative geniuses, he he has a huge ego and uh, you know, Kojima is like you know you really have like this kind of a timeline, this kind of budget. And Kojima is like, I'm doing whatever I want because I'm Hideo Kojima and like I've delivered all the previous Melgar Saw games. So you, uh, you know, Konami, <laughs> I don't care that you're not writing me a blank check anymore. I'm gonna keep spending your money that doesn't exist. So. But it, the end result was that, like, the last part of this game does kind of suffer in quality. I... I honestly... It wouldn't surprise me if... If Konami's budget and timeline had been, um... Larger, and they had, like, decided to keep Kojima on until this game was completely done. Um... I have a feeling that... Chapter 2 would not have been, like, two-thirds repeat missions. Uh, if anything, I would have guessed that there would have been, like, an actual 50 real original like story missions and that uh, things like total stealth extreme or subsistence mode would have just been like optional modes you can play you know those 50 missions on like after you had beaten them at least once and then that would have been interesting because I mean even though the end result was like they used the extreme total stealth or subsistence versions of missions as like ways to pad the length of the game towards the end um, because they'd run out of money for original content. Uh, there were a couple missions that don't have any total stealth, extreme, or subsistence mode that I think would have been interesting challenges to do so. Like, optionally, not kind of forced to by calling them main missions or uh, main episodes. You can see this really was an international production, though. Looking at the names and the credits. Oh, incidentally, so I'm still not famous. I still don't have any official sponsors. Uh, yeah, Pringles, they're not, they're not sponsoring me. I'm just eating them because, you know, I'm actually getting kind of tired of these. I, I bought like a 14 pack of these at Costco for I guess ten dollars or something, which seems like a good deal at the time, or maybe even less than ten dollars. It was pretty cheap. To the truth, though, I mean they're convenient, but uh, I actually think like just regular potato chips actually taste better. Oh well, too late. I mean every time I buy. Too much of something at Costco, I wound up giving 
you know, parts of it away to my friends. realize as I'm eating this I'm probably sitting too far back I don't know that my face has even in, even been in the frame for this oh hey Arnold oh that's pretty amazing I think Nickelodeon recently did like a made for TV like movie um, not a reboot not even maybe a sequel um, Arnold the Jungle Movie. Um, you can tell by looking at it that it's mostly like CG, but with, um, I forget the name of it. I don't know if you would call it like a filter or um, an overlay. Not, not palette. I, I'm not an artist, so I can't remember the technical term, but it's CG, but they kind of do like the effects where it looks like it's um you know cartoon ink colors washed on top of it as opposed to like looking like actual CG like a Pixar movie or whatnot and it sounds like they actually get most of the original voice actors back even though I mean this show is like more than a decade old I forget how long ago was Hey Arnold was that like 15, 20 years ago? Let's see, this so union makes a complete withdrawal from Afghanistan. Afghanistan floods into the Civil War. All the Berlin Wall. East and West Germany are reunited. The Gulf War begins. Liquid and solid are sent to the battlefield. The Soviet Union dissolves. South Africa acknowledges its position of nuclear weapons. simultaneously pledges to abolish its arsenal. And then for formation of the Taliban. The Taliban begins to gain influence in Afghanistan while commanding special forces in it. Falkson from Pakistan positions there. Oh. So yeah, that that part they talk about how Saw Snake killed Venom Snake. And then in 1999, you know, I guess Metal Gear 2, he kills the real big boss, except he didn't fully kill him because he was revived. It's interesting how uh, they talk about Hungary. What was it all for? If the boss has some plan, what is it? The real big boss is working separately from us to create his new nation. New nation? A military nation above and apart from all. The true outer heaven. Something created to maintain world balance. Independent of the struggles for supremacy, for personal profit, the cycles of revenge between countries. It'll be an army, all right, but more. Big Boss is building a nation. But until it's complete, we support the other Big Boss. The Phantom carries on his legend, his meme. That is Big Boss's plan. So that's the way it is. Nine years ago, I thought everything had been taken from me. But now I really have lost it all. The boss... and the future we were building together. One day, the age of Big Boss's sons will arrive. They'll likely want to settle the score with him. 
We have to shape that age. We'll each have roles to play. Building the foundation for a revolution led by both big bosses, the true one and the phantom. No. Big boss can go to hell. I'll make the phantom and his son stronger to send him there. For that, I'll keep playing my role. <laughs> you know, sooner or later, there will be only one boss. There's only room for one boss. His sons are fated to face each other someday, too. If the day ever comes that you go back to Cypher, I'll lay the other son. And then you and I will be enemies, too. One of us will have to kill the other. Fine by me. I'll be ready for the new age. Until then, we'd better get used to coexisting. Okay. Spunky Platypus. That is a name. List updated. Wow, that is a lot of cassette tapes. Unit dispatched. Unit dispatched. All right, let's take a quick look. Wow, that is a lot. I'm not going to make this so long that we listen to all of these. Uh, you can you can find this stuff on YouTube, I'm sure, or read the Metal Gear wiki. I mean, I'll take my time listening to all that stuff uh, Please off camera. Please select a landing zone. is now playing Darkest Dungeon. Oh, I, I guess you guys don't see um, the low notifications from my Steam overlay in the lower right corner. Darkest Dungeon, that was a good game too. Hella frustrating, but... Boss, welcome home. Yeah, I'm not here to see you, buddy. I'm here to see Paz. of me. I have not seen him lately. Maybe he is angry. There is 
something I am hiding from Chico. Or I thought there was. It was. Um. And then I. No, that is not right. But I am an angel of peace. I. I am a student. Uh. My head. It hurts. Well, if my count is right, that's. That's eight, that's nine. So only one last one to go. But before that, you get to watch me die hilariously a couple times, no doubt. Roger. In the extreme version of Sal Anthropus. Spoiler alert for Hey Arnold, but he uh, he finds that his parents are actually alive in that uh, South American jungle. Oh, and he and Olga. Wait, was it Helga? Um, who's the younger one? It's Helga, right? Isn't Olga the older sister? It's been a while. I ha I, I didn't really pay attention. But, um, yeah, they advanced their relationship, too, somehow. Feels kind of forced. Kind of like the entire, um, Hermione-Ron thing in Harry Potter. Okay. Select a mission. Last mission, and I don't know what's going to be different. Wait, okay, let's see. Three objectives versus three objectives. Okay, well, then this should be exactly the same, then, except much harder. Yeah. Let's give her a sinful butterfly. Do I go for the S rank? Sure, why not? I wonder what the requirements are to get the infinite ammo bandana, because this game has got to have one of those, right? Most of the previous Metal Gear Solid did. And sure, I, I, this, I expect this to be terribly difficult anyway. Oh, but you know what? I never figured out how to actually fire the rockets on this thing, so yeah, I should I really should have taught myself how to use that thing um, off camera. I, I actually don't know how to 
use the rocket launchers on that. GMP, gross military product. Oh, okay. That's what that stands for. I thought it was like general money points or something. So this cinematic is exactly the same. I mean, he has a lot more health, but... Uh-oh! Oh, okay. That's different. Okay, so those things lock on and travel much faster. So that attack is definitely much larger than before. Oh man, I'm like so red. Maybe I should have. Oh no! Oh crud, I have a feeling that those are going to like detonate like crazy and kill me. Wow, I have no chance to catch- I have no chance to catch a breather and uh, recover my health. Oh, I should have brought the sneak suit with extra defense. Because at that level of upgrades, uh, I think it has the same as my battle dress. Because I've upgraded another level since my last uh, episode. Great, the ammo drops are over there? Oh, not cool, man. It's coming after hours. Take it out.
sounds like super real gun charging. Which I know is going to be a one-hit kill in this mode. Uh-oh. Where's the gap? Okay. There was never that weird freeze frame thing. I never got a chance to attack uh, Psycho Mantis. Alright, I'm gonna assume this part's the same, so let's skip this one. Alright, achievement unlocked, accomplished. Development project has been added. Amazing, mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. Okay, that was not nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. I mean, Silent Anthropus had like about twice as much HP as normal mode, and uh. I mean, I did take a little more damage from some of those attacks. Even though I was wearing battle dress, whereas I think... Was I wearing battle dress or sneaking suit the first time I did on normal mode? Okay, and there's not even... There's no roll credits. Oh, I did get some challenge task stuff. Oh, uh, just the usual. Um... I guess there's only one thing left to do. A landing zone? Return to Mother Base Heading and see base. what's probably the final pause scene. Oh wow. I think this episode has accidentally gone on longer than I thought it would. I've been generally aiming to have these, you know, be no more than like 90 minutes, but... This one, the last one, I think one's like two and a half minutes, two and a half hours or something. It's really good to have quiet back. I mean, I guess with this, I'm pretty much done with the game. I mean, I'm probably gonna keep logging on to keep up with, like, the weekly chance task and, uh, you know, every two weeks for the new, um, FOB events. And, uh, I might compulsively go back and try to, like, S rank and ch chance task everything. And get like 100% achievement, steam achievement rate for this game. I mean, why not? I've already put in like. I think my steam counter says like almost 500 hours. I mean, granted, like, I think 200 of those hours are probably like me, like, doing other things, waiting for, um, developments and, uh, dispatches to, to finish up. Wait. Do I need to go further up? Maybe I have to go further up. There we go. Welcome home, boss. Alright. That's probably the last one, I think. Oh, Snake. What is it, Snake? Oh, you know, I probably should have changed to my tuxedo. Football. I joined in. And there's Huey refereeing. He said, we have forsaken our countries and become one with the Earth. 
It is good being here together with everyone, you know? It was... Um... And then I... No, that is not right. But I am an angel of peace. I... I am a student. I'm sorry, Snake. My head hurts. Could you... let me rest? Hmm. That can't be it. Was there something I'm missing? Please select a mission. Side ops. There's only ten mother base soldiers, right? Sorry, let me let me try walking in. Yeah, that we're supposed to wait. What was that? Was that? A... Oh, what is this? Huh? Has that always been there? Did I only appear now? Okay. So let me leave Mother Base. Please landing zone. Roger. I wonder if I can just come right back without having to do like some random um, I'm not sure if returning a meet to my base will actually refresh refresh my ability to interact with Paz, so uh why not show you this? I don't think I've ever shown you guys this, right? And of course when I say guys I always mean girls and non-binaries and sentient AIs. Y'all. Maybe I should say y'all, even though I'm not a southerner. Technically, if I wanted to like max out the amount of points I get for this, I would have like worn fatigues and maybe used lower gear. But I don't want to waste time like dying a ridiculous number of times. I've done that enough in, uh, especially the previous part with uh, quiet exits. Eliminate the target. How you do it is your call. So these FOB special fence, they're even though they're in FOB style. Um, you actually do it against like a AI target and not another human being who's going to retaliate when they find out. And this changes, I think, every two weeks. Oh, has this always been here? It's mine now.
specific timing. So yeah, that one is not so s stealthy, but uh, some of them actually are. Um, Extraction arrived at Mother Base. And after all, you kind of know what event you're facing because they change the names. But yeah, some of them are like properly, like infiltrating at like a level one, two, three, or four FOB. So it's you have to be sneaky or prepared to have a really terrible fight where you don't get supply drops or buddy. Also, when you're facing actual human. FOBs, you uh, can't use reflex, so that sucks. But the main reason we've been doing these is because you can get event points and trade them in for all sorts of cool uniforms, swimsuits, that looks like tidy whities um, weapon colors, emblem parts, I mean you can you get all sorts of things you don't necessarily need to uh, to beat the normal game, but uh, if you want to be all competitive with like the online stuff then you can. Please select a mission. Mission heading to Afghanistan. I'm not actually going there. I just need to change my outfit. Okay, looking sharp for our final scene of pause. Please I think. select a landing zone. I really hope I'm right, otherwise we have to end this playthrough on a really lame note. Um, oh yeah, I already said it earlier, but um, actually I didn't see everything. This game is still low screen approved, even though for various reasons it doesn't quite live up to Mulgar Saw 3. Um, or, to a, to, to a lesser extent, I mean, Metal Gear Solid 3 is definitely the best. Um, I, I would say it's a three-way tie between Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 4, and 5 for second best because they each have some element that was really strong. Um, yes, I actually think Metal Gear Solid 2 is also tied for second place because I think people really underestimate how like meta and creepy and cool that entire like head fake with Raiden um, like naked Raiden at the end is and like Colonel Campbell is like sending you word messages and you suspect that he may be an AI and not a real person like I actually thought that was pretty cool it also made me wonder if I was like delirious and had been like up for too many hours in a row playing that game like Colonel Campbell sends a message saying like oh hey shouldn't you go out and get some sun
Wait, how did I get up here? Well, I guess I'm not going back there anytime uh, ever because there's no stairs. Feeling. 
the real emotion that is locked away at the bottom of your heart. Let it fly out. Let it guide you. Live. I think it is my job to tell you that. That is why I exist. So this tape is the last one. Once you are done listening to it, I am one phantom limb that will be gone for good. My flesh, my bones, joining the silt on the ocean floor. But do not forget, as long as you remember me, I will always live within you. Not a phantom limb or a phantom anything. As part of your heart. I will always be your angel of peace. So, I know exactly how to finish. Say peace. Peace. Well, if you, uh, if you like this video, um, or, you know, this playthrough or uh, anything else, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel, uh, share it with your friends, um, it's weird, like, pause is technically... I mean, most of the pause backstory is totally optional through the visits to um, the apparently <laughs> never constructed medical bay. Um, and yet, even though like you can go through this entire game not doing most of the pause stuff, that... I mean, along with quiet, I mean, it's, it's really the two women of, of the story that um, that give emotional resonance, that give gravitas to this all. I'm Lois Crane, wishing you peace. <laughs>